Chishorn village has four houses and a post office, along with Loch Carran, nine miles away, a picturesque straggle of houses along the loch side. The total population was about 600 before oil came. For such a community, the influx of 400 construction men posed problems enough, but the real impact was yet to come. In approving the Howard Doris application, the council had noted that a maximum of 400 men only would be employed on site at any one time. Then the West Highland Free Press broke the news. Howard Doris wanted another 300 men. I mean, I think Howard Doris came in here on a total con, um, that they were very astute operators, that when they came in here, that everybody's attention was diverted uh, to Drumbui. Everyone was looking at Drumbui, a kind of great cause celebre of British planning history. And at this time, when uh, Taylor Woodrow and Molums were talking about a thousand men at Drumbui, Howard Doris with a nice old Sir John come along, hold public meetings, say we only want a little thing, 400 men, we'll put trees round it, and everyone says, well that doesn't sound so bad. So in they come, totally cynically from that moment on, they have taken every planning condition going and have smashed it with, with just total disregard for all the promises given. It's ridiculous to say that we conned anybody because we put in our application what we knew and then accepted an order for something much bigger. I agree there are business advantages naturally. We're not in business for philanthropic reasons, but there are substantial advantages for people of the, people of the area. The obvious advantages, of course, are that we bring new life, I think, economic and perhaps even cultural, although some people might smile at that, into an area which I know, people will forgive me if I say it, was stagnating. And in place of the stagnating local culture, now the alternative culture of the oil boom. Hard living, big earning, the culture of the travelling men. First of all, Howard Doris came to Loch Carran and they arranged a public meeting. And at the public meeting, they told us something about their plans. They gave us some idea of the size of the project, said they would employ approximately 700 men. They also assured us that uh, there would be no work on the Lord's Day, and Sir John Howard assured us that he himself was a Christian and that he would never think of working on the Lord's Day. And uh, that's really, that's one of the main bones of contention that they undertook not to work on the Lord's Day and that their promises were completely disregarded. Not only did their workforce escalate from 700, but it went up to 3,000. What we're surrounded with in these parts are basically an extremely honest kind of people. People that are honest enough to want to believe what other people are saying. And if the managing director of a large organisation comes along and makes promises to them that if their organisation were allowed to enter the area and develop on a small scale, that that scale would be kept small and that wishes of the local community were obeyed, then I think the tendency is for honest folk to want to believe that this is true. Looking back to when this site was proposed and remembering some of the promises that were made and now looking some years later at the incredible size that this thing has grown to and some of the offers which appeared to be made in good faith at the time to keep the peace in the locality. The use of roads, for example. I'm not necessarily putting the blame fairly and squarely on the shoulders of the financial enterprise. I think governments that allow this sort of thing to happen are as much to blame as anybody. Yes, because the, the planning authority put restrictions on and have still got restrictions nominally on the site but they don't enforce them 
at all, like the traffic using the roads, like the number of men that were going to be on site, the area of accommodation and such like. They put controls on, but they didn't enforce them at all. And how Doris just, well, the site just expanded as it pleased. Why and then went for planning permission. The tempting answer is to say that because the government wants the oil out of the North Sea, and they don't care to a certain extent what they sacrifice to get it out as quickly as possible. Um, I think another answer is that it's inevitable, that if you're going to have to build something big, then you're going to have a large organisation which spreads out and uses a lot of employment. Yeah. And no matter how you try to pretend in the first place that you're going to keep it small, if you're a big organisation, I think you know full well to what degree this thing is going to spread. And I think the onus is therefore on you to present a truthful picture to the community of what they're likely to expect. Because I know full well that a lot of things, the, the, the size, scale of this thing, as, it, as it's grown to over the years, is not what a good many local people were led to believe in the first place. And yet the local people now seem to be fairly hopeful that more contracts come. They've gotten wedded to it. But they have to believe that because their whole lifestyle has been changed in such a way that this is what they're expecting from their living up here now. They, to go back to the old ways of doing a bit of work here and a bit of work there and just managing to get through and being, well, reasonably content that that was what their life was, they've now been shown something which is almost beyond their concept. And then it's been taken away. And they're left there thinking, which one do we really want? It's, and it's yeah. the only work that's been put in front of them, basically. And so they obviously want what they've had. Um, if someone had put some other work in front of them that was going to be long term, then they'd have wanted that to stay as well. It's the fact that it's work, not the fact that it's a, an oil construction site. Mm. And they want work. But I mean, work for, well, I mean, this next order is going to be for 10 weeks, probably. And, it's not a lot of use to very many people. They need permanent employment up here. It doesn't seem to be a very stable way to plan development. No, it isn't stable at all. And it doesn't, I don't think, in the long run, help the people. Certainly not local people. Um, people who move into the area uh, from southern areas are used to to changing jobs and attitudes and to being able to adapt to this the sort of pressures that are put on by by this sort of work whereas I think the locals will ultimately find it far more difficult to go back to something um, like their crofting ways in fact I don't think they will 